Okay, now we're gonna to get to the point where we're gonna to start to paint it. Now, we've talked already about the fact that there's lots and lots of different types of mark making. Now, we don't want to paint all of these in, in sections. For example, you don't wanna paint the white, then, then a strip of purple, then a strip of white. What you wanna do is paint the purple, and then the white goes on over the top. Otherwise, it becomes way too fiddly. So what we're gonna start doing is painting in solid blocks of color. And you can see that I've got my palette here with my paint on. I've put a lot of paint on here because I'm gonna paint this in one go. You guys are gonna paint this over a series of weeks. So you want to have a lot less paint on your palette, otherwise it just gets wasted. And it's much easier to just put a little bit more on as and when you need it, rather than putting loads and loads on your palette and then having to wash half of it down the sink. Now, Remember that his work is really, really colourful. This one probably has slightly more of a colour theme to it with these blues and these greens and a little bit of red coming in. This one, slightly warmer tones, um, sort of, uh, purples, yellows, oranges, reds, and a little bit of blue here. You can make a decision how you want it to be. Some of his work is much more multicoloured, like this one, and it's entirely up to you. I really like this colour scheme, so I think this is the one that I'm probably going to stick to. And you can have the, his images near you as a reference to help you. Remember, your colours can be used as they come out of the pot, which is fine, but it's better if you mix them to generate slightly different tones. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint this, and as you're watching the video, although it's going to be quite quick, do have a look at how I'm mixing some of my paints together to get different tones and different colours. Now when we're doing this, what we want to be focusing on is how we hold our brush. So you need to have your fingers on or just above the metal part of the brush. Don't hold it at the end for something like this because you need a lot of control. So hold it down the bottom. When you're painting, you want to be resting on this part of your hand and that will help you get nice smooth brush strokes. When you put your paint on, use all of the brush, not just the tip, and that's going to help you get nice, long, flat uh, brush strokes on your page, and that's going to make the paint go on nice and flat. And if you look at Fabri's Lenny, Fabric Lenny's work, you will see that it is very flat painting. There's lots of detail on it, but it is flat. So I'm going to start with this red, as you can see. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it up into orange because I think it will be a nice, a nice colour change. Now I'm going to do that on the paper. So I've got my red, which I've made by mixing these two reds together. And I'm going to take this darker of the two yellows and just pick a little bit up with my brush. And then I'm just going to apply that straight onto here and then blend it down into my red. Now I already have a lot of red on my brush. which is gonna start to mix with that yellow and turn it into a nice orange color. And you should be able to see that mixing in, like so. And then I'm not gonna touch the red again, so I'm gonna go all the way around his head and I'm just gonna keep loading my brush with this dark yellow. And then slowly it's gonna get lighter and lighter and lighter and that's gonna give me a nice subtle transition from that red into that orange. And I can repeat this process with lots of different colors they don't always have to travel from one colour to another, like I'm doing here. Sometimes you can just rinse your brush and start a whole new separate colour, but it would be good to try all different techniques. So you should definitely give this one a go because it's a nice one.
Okay, so as I've started doing this, I've realised that I've made the mistake that all of you will want to make. So I think it's really important that I highlight this. So in my excitement about wanting to paint my birds, I completely forgot that the one thing you must always do when you're painting a composition is to start with your background. It's easier to start from the back and work up than it is to start from the top and work down. So when you do this, and your class teacher will remind you of this, make sure you do your background first and as I'm painting this background what I want you to make a note of is how I'm changing my colours as I'm going across because I've looked at Fabric Lenny's work and I can see there's lots of different colours coming through in his background in all of his compositions so I want to make sure that I'm changing that colour as I'm working through my background.
Okay, so that's the whole composition covered. Um, and obviously at the moment it looks very flat and it doesn't look anywhere near as interesting as Fabric Lenny and some of the beautiful patterns that he's got on his work. Um, so the next video that we're going to look at is some different techniques that we can use to start applying patterns to the surface of this composition.